I think it would be different for Danny Jacobs. People love Danny a different way. You understand what I'm saying? Like most Browns, most of us, not and not just Browns villains, like like Roy uh, Roy Jones, uh, Floyd Mayweather, they're comfortable playing the villain. You understand what I'm saying? They don't mind. Roy and, wasn't really a villain though. Nah, Roy but he's comfortable. He don't give a fuck if you look at him that way. Not while he was fighting. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? When you disrespect the niggas with one hand behind your back and put pat, put pat, <laughs> yeah. them, you don't mind if niggas. You understand what I'm saying? But like, like, and and Shannon, I didn't see. <laughs> look, Briggs, I didn't. See, I didn't see Shan on camera running up on Klitschko or them niggas digging in they food and they potato salad throwing it across the fucking restaurant and shit like you know when you comfortable doing that then you know what i'm saying that comes part some people gonna love you some people gonna hate you but i feel like danny jacobs is a different he's a different kind of animal you understand if like danny Danny done beat cancer in front of our eyes you understand what i'm saying he's the nicest guy in the world you never hear him talking crazy you know what i'm saying Good guy, good brother. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, he's still, like, he still has his fucking childlike innocence that from from when we used to see him in Sun Building. Like, he literally lived in Strang Building. And I don't know hey, I could be wrong. Yo, I could be wrong, but I just feel like they love him different. You know, it'll be like, oh, uh, it, it hurts to see him go down. They wouldn't last. But imagine this. Imagine how many other Danny's you got in Brownsville. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. And like Serene said, he's a nice kid. I was a nice kid. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. There's, some, there's some demons in Brownsville. Right. You say, hey man, you can make a million dollars if you do X, Y, and Z. We're gonna see now. You a kid? You say you a killer? Now, without a gun, are you still a killer? Because Brownsville used to be known for we could fight. Right. See, when they had the Jolly Stompers and all them gangs back in the you know days in the sixties and the seventies. You know what I'm saying? They could fight. Time of all, the Jolly Stompers, they could, they, could, they could fight. You know what I'm saying? They used to fight. Now, the boys don't fight no more. They can't knuckle up. They they, they got their pride. They got they, their pride is to, you know, whatever. If they lose a the fight, they feel like they got to get a gun and shoot somebody. You know what I mean? We used to have to fight. Everybody used to have to fight. I remember this, I remember this dude took my, my ski hat on the, on, the, on the 60 bus one time. You know what I'm saying? And he took it and got off the bus. And I was like, dang, I gotta get off the bus and fight this nigga. I had to get off the bus and fight him right there. <laughs> you know, the pizza shop right there on Rockaway by 263 on the corner of the pizza shop. I had uh-huh. to fight him right here. Hell yeah. So listen, I'm great. Um, I wanna um I wanna I wanna get talk a little bit more about like your um your your your, your businesses, like the, the 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 that you spoke about as far as like Stude is, is the medicine and the and, and all of that and how and how people could get access to your services, you know what I'm saying, or to your to your brilliance. Oh. You, well, I think I think well, right now what I'm doing is, and like, as I was saying earlier, when I was going through my depression, champ, and I was you know I gained weight, I was I was I became suicidal at one point. I was like, man, I, I want to live. I want to mm-hmm. live, especially if I um. I gotta, you know, I didn't know what I was gonna have to go back to Brownsville one day or go somewhere like it to have to relocate because when you ain't making no money as a boxer no more, okay, what else? That's all I've been doing since I was 18 years old. Right. Really 16. So, you know, I ain't been working. I don't know about no jobs. I was like, damn, what I'm gonna do now? How do I gonna afford to live the lifestyle I live? How do I go backwards? Well, you know, a lot of people have to downsize, but um, I was like, I'm gonna try to get, I'm gonna try to fight it. So I said, let me think, what can I do? I've always been, had that entrepreneur spirit. Um, unfortunately, things wasn't working out. And it was because I was walking in meetings and I was 400 pounds. Mm. You know, I was weighing a 5X, a 6X. And I thought that I was gonna go to Rick Ross route. You know, have money, but be a big nigga with, with a fat stomach. And I was mm. gonna be, just be a businessman in transition. But nobody was fucking with me mm. as, as, as fat shit. So I had to, I realized I was depressed two years on the couch. Then I was like, I can't get nothing done because ain't nobody fucking with me in the business because of my appearance. I said, I gotta get back in shape. I said, I'm gonna show these motherfuckers. And and that accompanied with um again, you no know, entourage now, the money gone. Um, that you know, like damn, what do I do now? I, I made calls to try to get fights. 
Nobody was fucking with me, no man, no promoter. Everybody was dissing me off. So um, I, at the verge of being suicidal, man, I started smoking cannabis and I, it was life changing for me. And um, mm. at that point, um, I, I got off the pills the next day. I smoked the joint one night. The next day, I pulled the pills, I shaved, I cut my hair off, cut off my dress that same day. Then I started smoking trees. Um, my face looked like a football helmet, man. I was 400 pounds. Mm. And um, I started walking my baby in the carriage. And I, my daughter was just born. And I started walking her every day in the carriage. I went from that. And um, I started looking into, I started looking into, from a medical standpoint, what could I do to get myself better? Because it wasn't, I mean, it just happened like this. You Wait up, so Briggs, you yes, wasn't sir. smoking trees before none of this? When you no, were boxing on that, you wasn't smoking trees? Never. I, I was born asthmatic. You know what I'm wow. saying? I was born with asthma. I weighed less than two pounds at birth. Nobody wow. never expected me to be a boxer, right? I was the only child. I was a light skinned nigga growing up in the towers. You know, the towers is soft. The towers is nice. You know what I'm saying? Right. The, the towers is like Beverly Hills for Brownsville. So yeah, it was at one point. The pool yeah. in the pack. You know what I mean? They got some, they got some hitters in there, man. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. But, but I'm saying, bro, I know what you mean, right? It's compared to living down the hill. But see, you got to realize I was a methadone baby. So I, I was down the hill. Everybody, you know, don't please know everybody. So my mother was well known throughout Brownsville. Everybody know Miss Margie. Oh, I so, so I was always in every project. My mom, was, come on, we going over to your aunt house in, in Tilda. You going to your grandmother's house in, in Plaza. And we lived in the garden. Then we moved back up to the towers. Um, so having been, I was a Brownsville baby, and my father was on the clinic in Powell, on Powell Street. So I'd be over there. You know what I'm saying? On Sutter Avenue all day with him. Stone, it was Stone Avenue then. Stone right, Avenue. Right, right, right. I was the little baby that you see, the kids that you see out there with the dope feed. You know what I'm saying? I was one of those. So growing up like that, you know what I'm saying? I, I, and I was going back to what you said earlier, those were my haunting memories. You know what I'm saying? Those those haunting memories caught up with me later on in life. And and they ate it, they ate at my soul that that when I did make money, I didn't put it in put it in your way. I wanted to live for the moment. When women became my my addiction. I never tried cocaine in my life to this day. I never tried heroin. I used to drink. I didn't smoke no weed until nine years ago. I just started smoking weed. I, I smoke weed all day, like cigarettes, right? But I never smoked weed. I love weed. I haven't had a drink in 10 years. Nine. Since the day I picked up weed, I never drank again. Mm. I never took another, I never took another vitamin. I never took nothing else for, for depression. Not a Xanax, a Paxil, a Zolo, a Depakote, a Theraquil, nothing. Just cannabis. So I said, yo, I said to myself, I was on the I was on the, the brink of dying. I didn't want to live no more. I was broke. I was I was fat. My dick wasn't working. I was, you know what I'm saying? I was just a fat nigga. I couldn't look down and see my joint. And then I said, yo. <laughs> and then I said, yo, I want to fix myself. You know what I'm saying? When you can't do no, when you can't have sex with your lady, you might as well die. I mean, I mean that, that can make you that can make you depressed for sure. That can focus. Let me ask you the yeah. question. I'm gonna ask y'all all the questions. I'm gonna keep it hundred with y'all. And y'all, like, I want y'all to take y'all time before you answer. Farm, 
East New York Radio, All Elements Mix Show, The Star Power Collective, The Cosa Nostra Radio, 5150 Mix Show, Block News Live, Final Coffee Mix Show, and Hidden Gems. Check them all out under the delicious vinyl radio station.